We're more like regular people. What are they actually trying to pay for in the future? Right. How much will it cost them? So your thing is like, it's like if you don't have any balls, yeah, get in. Basically. You know, <laughs> if you just have no. Well, it's, so that depends like on the client. I like gambling. Yeah. I like a good gamble. Well, I did that for 10 years. I did. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you and I, I was telling. Some people say I do it currently. Somebody yeah. here. You and I have a very similar origin. Well, I'm, I'm a little bit older than you, but I started in the Long Island brokerage firms. Wow. Which was catering to gamblers. Basically. That's right. You would cold call business owners. All day. It w- you would make 500 phone calls, 50 people. Would- now, I know I need you guys to hear this right now. This Speak to you. Th- this is really important right here, what, what they're talking about of how they funnel people in and how like the, the game used to be different and stuff. It's, it's, pretty, it's, pretty, it's pretty insane, like the, the amount of calls. Like you've seen in all the Wall Street movies, like they're calling people after people. I mean, it's like 500 phone calls and stuff, but they funnel you into. And then basically – like they, they end up hitting people that are doing really they're doing really well in middle America and these guys are just like wow these big Wall Street guys are hitting me up and stuff I definitely have to do it and stuff so um and this is even I mean it's 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 shocking actually and stuff so definitely man <laughs> shout out to CryptoCon man what is this twenty dollars super chat just wanted to confess my sins to hex Jesus I had a six month winner here in I don't know where Affected my work, which has affected me buying Hex. Thanks to you clearing the skies and helping me buy Hex again, washing my sins away. Thank God. That Padre, is Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City. There you go. Padre, Hijo, Espíritu Santo, Amen. And then may you live peacefully with the Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh. And of those 50, 10 of them would actually let you speak. Five of them would be quali- of the owners, Ow. which was catering to gamblers, basically. That's right. You would cold call business owners. All day. It w- you would make 500 phone calls, 50 people would speak to you, and of those 50, 10 of them would actually let you speak. Five of them would be qualified to actually invest with you. So 500 people, they call 500 people, 50, 50 would talk to them, 10 would be more or less like possibly, like possibly like they're interested, and then five of them would actually be qualified to actually use. So like we're talking about like 1% or even less. Dang. But they weren't really looking for investments. They were looking right. for what's the next stock that's going to go up, you know, 50%. Did you start when, like, Stratton Oakmont was I was thing? right after all of that. Wow, okay. So I worked for guys that worked there. Okay. Um, but they were trying to clean up their act. But the thing is, the business is just not that good of a business if you're doing it the right way. Which only took me – I'm smart. Right. So it only took me 10 years to figure that out. Cold calling business <laughs> owners is tough. Well, now you can't do it. But yeah. back then, people were excited to hear from Now brokers. you can't do it at all. Who's, who answers the phone? Right. That's la- a good point. What was the last time your phone rang, you didn't know the number, and you were like, Well, oh, before TD Ameritrade, I like, hey. I yeah. always answer because I oh, like yeah, to have yeah. fun, but. Before TD Ameritrade, like, that's how people bought stocks. See, that's I, right. They, if you, they were sold. Picture this. Like, I started when I was in college. I started, uh, I started working for a guy who I think he was making 100 grand a month. He, his job before this was a bouncer. <laughs> dude a hundred thousand dollars a month even today is incredible money like it's insane cash so this guy went from a bouncer to making a hundred thousand dollars a month and damn dude you know how much money that, that bro that's like 80s money too like that's that's like that's like making like seven hundred thousand a million dollars a month today jesus christ man right okay. so my dad plays golf with his dad I don't know what to do with my summer after freshman year. So he's like, go work for this guy's son. He's making fucking six figures a month. So the assumption is like, all right, so this has to be legit, right? How could you make that much money when they're all wearing suits, like dressed to the nines? Yeah. And the office is on third Avenue, uh, like top floor and everything looks, it looks like you would picture Goldman Sachs would look right. But the difference is, well, a lot of differences. But so they say, all right, here's a stack of business owners on index cards. Spend the whole day calling them. Find somebody that wants to talk to me. So you, know, what, so, yeah. so you do that, and then this guy calls that person back the next day. Now, I, I want to make a little distinction right here. It says, like, there's differences between Goldman Sachs and these guys, right? Eh, eh. <laughs> I don't know about all that, Chief, right? But, I, but here's the thing. At the end, the whole business is based off of gambling. In terms of like these 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 Oakmont sort of like 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 basically businesses, right? These these runoffs of like Wolf of Wall Street runoffs, right? But then you actually have the other side, which is like which is Goldman Sachs, and they actually have like a wealth building department. So you have more of like 
like what you think like safe investments and stuff like that. But then at the highest levels, they're gambling. So basically what, what it really is, is like the other businesses doesn't really have like the, the normie side of the business. And then they only have like the degen side. And then that's where they're shitting on them. But if you actually look at the top of Goldman, they're also doing very degenerate things as well and stuff at the top end of the business as well and stuff. So basically the guys trying to get rich, doing degenerate shit, guys at the top doing degenerate shit, trying to get even richer. And then people in the middle there, you know, just maintaining wealth and, and growing it slowly and stuff. So it's kind of, it's almost like the bell curve. You got the dumb guys trying to get rich. You got the rich guys trying to get richer on, this, on the other side of the bell curve. And you got the guys in the middle just basically trying to maintain and just slowly grow it. Day, and that person's excited because it's a guy that owns like an industrial facility in Indiana. Right. Somebody from Wall Street is calling. Right. It's, it's exciting. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. And now, obviously, it sounds ridiculous in today's context, but that was a business. My When I started mortgages, the guy— And that's not that ridiculous, actually. So Because some of these, especially if they're working in commodities and stuff, like if they're like, wow, these Wall Street guys, like so, sometimes like these these commodity players, the way they end up uh, really protecting themselves from volatility and stuff, they end up they end up are playing the market against their own commodity. So like just in case they make a big order and stuff, they they they, sh they have shorts up just in case the market takes a shit and they protect their ass and stuff and they basically have the money to keep funding their business and stuff. So these um, high level commodity players and stuff like that in the, in the industrials, they are playing the market at the high level and stuff. And this is where some of the money for commodities is really coming from is like it's hedging. It's a lot of hedging. Like McDonald's hedges their potato prices. It's insane. <laughs> like, like literally every business, every major business that has to do with like when they're really they're buying billions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars of like of commodities and stuff, they are hedging themselves. Fake businesses, you guys, fake business. Tim Dillon. Is calling. Right. It's it's exciting. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. And now obviously it sounds ridiculous in today's context, but that was a business. My when I started mortgages, the guy that owned the company told me, brought me in his office and he goes, listen, he was 24. He was probably making a hundred grand a month. And he said, I was a ecstasy dealer. My <laughs> lawyer told me I can't get you out of this. If you get caught again, Okay. he goes, you got to do something else. So he goes, I do this now. <laughs> and that was the beginning of the, my career. Right. And I was just like sitting there. It was like a, a motivational speech, a la Gary Vee or whatever. And he goes, I knew that I couldn't sell ecstasy anymore right. because I would go to jail for a very long time. Yeah. So now I sell mortgages. Sub there was a place right by the Atlanta. <laughs> That's a lateral. That's a lateral move right there, man. You know, I, can't, I just can't sell drugs anymore. So instead, I'm going to swindle people into bad mortgages, you guys. This is the way. This is the way. I love Tim. D Tim Dillon is so good at ripping into Gary Vee. I, I love Gary Vee too, but damn, he's so good at like, like rugging it, bro. It's